Good evening. Okay, so I never watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, apart from the odd episode, maybe. But, you know, I was never a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. And uh, a very famous episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is called Once More with Feeling, uh, apparently. And in that, apparently, all the Buffy the Vampire Slayer people sing. And it's like a musical, and it's woven into the plot, and it's a big thing. And let's be honest, that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, a show that kind of, within its own uh, truth, within its own fiction, um, can go from being one thing to another thing, uh, and be believable, and be a musical, and that's great. That's not a patch on what Doctor Who can do. And this is why Doctor Who's the single greatest television programme of all time. Uh, because we've just watched a story in which we've had uh, Serrano de Bergerac fighting uh, Blackbeard the Pirate, uh, and then we've had Gulliver uh, failing to see robots, as in Gulliver's Travels with Gulliver, and we've had Rapunzel hanging out with a superhero. <laughs> and and yet it's all believable within the fiction of Doctor Who, and at no point did it seem ridiculous. In fact, I would wager that this is one of the best Doctor Who stories we've had so far. And, you know, when we talk about the best Trout stories, we say, oh, Evil of the Daleks, Power of the Daleks. Seriously, this takes some beating. And it pulls some magnificent performances from, from the cast. Not less so than Trout. Trout in this episode is amazing. I, I remember talking about the Dominators and saying the Dominators was okay. And it was, I enjoyed it. And it's by no means... The Dominator sounds like a sex toy. I think you made that point when we watched it. But... Um, you know, it was uh, in no way is it one of the ten worst Doctor Who stories of all time and all that. But my God, it's <laughs> poles apart from this. And Trout is just phenomenal. The bit where he realised that Jamie and Zoe are fiction. Uh, and he, the look on his face. This is a, you know, a character actor of some stature in the 1960s who has played all sorts of different roles on film. And here he is playing a space hobo. Um having to display real emotion and sadness about the fact that two of his uh, companions have been turned into fiction. It's just a bonkers premise. And yet it was so believable and so lovely. Uh, and also, uh, kudos to the controller or the master or whatever we're going to call him, but not the master because that just gets confusing. Because he's just a doddery old man. And yet at points it's just believable it's this evil, evil mastermind. In all honesty, I don't think it needs the silly... Oh, the planet Earth is at risk type vibe at the end. It feels a bit tacked on and pointless. And it's so irrelevant that you just ignore it. But, my God, this is just a stunning, stunning Doctor Who story. And only Doctor Who can do this. Only Doctor Who can do this. If you think that Once Upon a Feeling is a TV show pushing at the boundaries of what it can do, then, you know, the whole architecture of Doctor Who facilitates it being anything it wants to be, and that's a magnificent thing.